योग वशिष्ठा बाई सेज वाल्मीकि बुक टू मुमुक्ष खंडा इज बीइंग कंटिन्यूड चैप्टर एटीन वशिष्ठा सेड द सेवरल पार्ट्स ऑफ दिस वर्क आर ऑलरेडी रिलेटेड गिव राइज टू द अंडरस्टैंडिंग एज सीड्स सोन इन ए गुड फील्ड नेवर फेल टू प्रोड्यूस गुड फ्रूटेज इवन ह्यूमन कंपोजिशन आर एक्सेप्टेबल when they are instructive of good sense otherwise the vedas also are to be renounced because men are required always to abide by reason words comfortable with reason are to be received even if spoken by boys otherwise they are to be rejected as straws though pronounced by the lotus born whoever drinks from a well by reason of its being dug by his ancestors and rejects the holy water of the ganges even when placed before him is an incorrigible simpleton as early dawn is invariably accompanied by its train of light so is good judgment an inevitable attendant on the perusal of this work whether these lessons are heard from the mouth of the learned or well studied by one's self they will gradually make their impressions upon the mind by one's constant reflection on their sense they will first furnish to the learner a variety of sanskrit expressions and then spread before him a series of holy and judicious judicious maxims like so many ornamental creepers to decorate the hall they will produce a cleverness joined with such qualifications and greatness as to engage the good grace of gods and kings they are called the intelligent who know the cause and effect of things and are likened to a torch bearer who is clear sighted in the darkness of the night all their erroneous and covetous thoughts become weaker by degrees as the regions of the sky are cleared of their mists at the approach of autumn your thoughts require only the guidance of reason as every action needs be duly performed to make it successful the intelligent becomes by culture as clear as a great lake in autumn and it gets its calmness by reason like that of the sea after its churning by the mandhara mountain like the flame of the chandelier cleansed of its sootiness and dispelling the shroud of darkness the refined intelligent shines forth in full brightness and distinguishes things the evils of penury and poverty cannot overpower on them whose strong sight can discern the evils of their opposites wealth and riches as no dart can pierce the mortal parts of a soldier clad in full armor no worldly fears can daunt the heart of the wise man however nearest they may approach to him just as no arrow can pierce through a huge solid stone such doubts as whether it is destiny or our own merit that is the cause of our births and actions are removed by learning as darkness is dispelling dispelled by daylight there is a calm tranquility attending upon the wise at all times and in all conditions of life so also does the light of reason like solar rays follow the dark night of error the moon of right judgment has a soul as deep as the ocean and as firm as a mountain and a cool serenity always shines within him like that of moonlight it is he who arrives slowly at what is called living liberation who remains calm amidst the endless turmoil and is quite aloof from common talk his mind is calm and cool at everything it is pure and full of heavenly light shining serenely as the autumnal night with the radiance of moonbeams when the sun of reason illumines the cloudless cloudless region of the mind no portentous portentous comet of evil can make its appearance within its sphere all desires are at rest with the elevated they are pure with the steady and indifferent to the inert like the body of light clouds in autumn the slanders of envious evil wishes are put out of countenance by the wise as the frolics of goblins disappear at the approach of day the mind that is fixed on the firm base of virtue and placed under the burden under the burden of patience 
is not to be shaken by accidents but remains as a plant in a painting unmoved by winds the knowing man does not fall into the pitfalls lying all about the affairs of this world for who that knows the way will run into the ditch the minds of the wise are as much delighted in acting comfortably to the preceptors of good books and the examples of the virtuous as chaste women are fond of keeping themselves within the bounds of the inner apartments of the innumerable millions of atoms which compose this universe every one of them is viewed in the light of a world in the light of a world in the mind of the abstracted philosopher the man whose mind is purified by a knowledge of the precepts of liberation neither repents nor rejoices at the loss or gain of objects of enjoyment men of unfettered minds look upon the appearance and disappearance of every atomic world as the fluctuating wave of the sea they neither grieve at unwished for occurrences nor pine for their wished for chances and knowing well all accidents to be the consequences of their actions they remain as unconscious as trees these holy men appear as common people and live upon what they get whether they meet with aught of welcome or unwelcome to them their minds remain unconquered they having understood the whole of this shastra and having read and considered it well as well as pondered on its purport hold their silence as in the case of a curse or blessing this shastra is easy to be understood and is ornamented with figures of speech it is a poem full of flavors and embellished with beautiful similes one may be self taught in it who has a slight knowledge of words and their senses but he who does not understand the purport well should learn it from a pandit after hearing thinking understanding his work one has no more need of practicing austerities or of meditation and repeating the mantras and the and other rites and a man requires nothing else in this world for the attainment of his liberation by deep study of this work and its repeated perusal a man attains to an uncommon scholarship next to the purification of the soul the ego and the non ego that is the viewer and the view are both but chimeras of the imagination and it is this annihilation alone that leads insensibly to the vis- to the vision of the soul the error of the reality of ego and the perceptible world will vanish away as visions in a dream for who that knows the falsehood of dreams will fall into the error for who that knows the falsehood of dreams will fall into the error of taking them for truth as an imaginary palace gives no grief or joy to anybody so it is in the case of erroneous conception of the world as no body is afraid of a serpent that he sees in painting so the sight of a living serpent neither terrifies nor pleases one who not knows it and as it is our knowledge of the painted serpent that removes our fear of it as a serpent so our conviction of the unreality of the world must disperse our mistake of its existence even the plucking of a flower or tearing of its tender leaflet is attended with a little exertion of the nails and fingers but no bodily exertion whatever is required to gain the blessed state of yoga meditation there is an action of the members of the body accompanied with the act of plucking or pulling of a flower but in the other case of yoga you have only to fix your mind and make no exertion of your body it is practicable with ease by any one sitting on his easy seat and fed with his usual food and not addicted to gross pleasures nor nor trespassing the rules of good conduct you can derive happiness at each place and time from your own observations as also from your association with the good wherever it is available this is an optional rule these are the means of gaining a knowledge of the highest wisdom conferring peace in this world and saving us from the pain of being reborn in the womb but such as are afraid of this course and are addicted to the vicious pleasures of the world are to be reckoned as too base and no better than feces and worms of their mothers bowels attend now rama to what i am going to say with regard to the 
advancement of knowledge and improvement of the understanding in another way here now the recent method in which this shastra is learnt by people and its pure true sense interpreted to them by means of its exposition that thing which serves to explain the unapparent meaning of a passage by its illustration by something that is well known and which may be helpful may be useful to help the understanding of the passage is called a simile of exa or example it is hard to understand the meaning given before without an instance just as it is useless to have a lap lap lamp stick at home without setting a lamp on it at night whatever similes and examples i have used to make you understand the precepts are all derived from some cause or other but they lead to knowledge of the uncaused brahma wherever the comparisons and compared objects are used as expressive of the cause and effect they apply or to all cases except brahman who is without a cause the examples that are again that are given to explain the nature of brahman are to be taken in their partial and not general sense whatever examples are given here as exemplary of divine nature they are to be understood as appertaining to a world seen in a dream in such cases no corporeal instance can apply to the incorporeal brahman nor optional and ambiguous expressions give a definite idea of him those who find fault with instances of an imperfect or contradictory nature cannot blame our comparison of the appearance of the world to a vision in dream a prior and posterior non entity is considered as existent at the present moment as is the visible world which was not which was not nor will be afterwards so the waking and dreaming states are known to be alike from our boyhood the simile of the existence of the world while the dreaming state is ex is exact in all instances as our desires thoughts our pleasures and displeasures and all other acts are alike in both states both this work and other others which have been composed by other authors on the means of salvation have all pursued the same plan in their explanation of the knowledge the resemblance of the world to a dream is found also in the shrutis or vedanta it is not to be explained in a word but requires a continued course of lectures on the subject the comparison of the world to an imaginary imaginary in the dream or an imaginary utopia of the mind is also adduced in examples of this kind in preference to others whenever a causality is shown by a simile of something which is no cause there the simile is applied in some particular and not all its general attributes the partial similitude of this comparison with some property of the compared object is unhesitatingly acknowledged by the learned in all their illustrations the light of the sense of something is compared with a lamp in its brightness only in disregard of its stand or stick the oil or the wick the compared object is to be understood in its capacity of admitting a partial comparison of the properties as in the instance of sense and light the simile must consists simile consists in the brightness of both when the knowledge of the knowable thing is derived from some particular property of the comparison it is granted as a suitable simile in understanding the sense of some great saying we must not overshadow our intellect by bad logic nor set a not our common sense by an unholy scepticism we have by our reasoning well weighed the verbosity of our opinionative adversities and never set aside the holy sayings of the vedas even when they are at variance with the opinions of our families o rama we have stored in our minds the truths resulting from the anonymous voice of all the shastras whereby it will be evident that we have attained the object of our belief apart from the fabricated systems of heretical shastras chapter 19 ascertainment of true evidence it is the similarity of some particular property which constitutes a simile 
whereas a complete similitude between the comparison and compared object destroys their difference. From the knowledge of parables follows the cognition of the one soul treated of in the Shastras and the peace which attends on the meditation of the holy world, word. Holy word is styled extinction. It is therefore useless to talk of either agreement of the example and the exemplar. It is enough to the purpose pur to comprehend the purport of the holy word in some way or other. Know your peace to be the chief good and be diligent to secure the same. When you have got the food for your eating, it is useless to talk about how you came to it. A cause is compared with or shown for its explication by something which is no cause at all. So is a comparison given to express its partial agreement in some respect with the compared object. We must not be so absorbed in the pleasures of the world as to be devoid of all sensibility, like some blind frogs which are generated and grow fat amidst the stones. Be attentive to these parables and learn your best state from them. All reasonable men should abide by the lessons of religious works for their internal peace, as also by the precepts of the Shastras, by the rules of humility, prudence, and spiritual knowledge and also by the continued practice of the acts of religious merit. Let the wise continue their inquiries until they can obtain their internal peace and until they may arrive at the fourth stage Turiya of felicity known by the name of indestructible tranquility. Whoso has gained their fourth state of tranquil felicity he has really passed beyond the limits of the ocean of the world, whether he is alive or not, or a householder or an ascetic. Such a man remains steady at his place like the calm sea, undisturbed by the Mandara mountain, where he has performed his duties according to the Shrutis and Smritis. Smritis. When there is a partial agreement of the comparison with the nature of the compared object, it is to be considered maturely for the well understanding of the point in question and not to be made a matter of controversy. From every form of argument you are to understand the intelligent but the confounded disputant is blind both to rise and false reasoning. The notion of self, soul or God being clear, self-evident in the sphere of our consciousness within the mind. Anyone who prattles meaninglessly about this truth is said to be defective in his understanding. That is our consciousness of self-existence according to the maxim, ego sum quick cogito, is an undeniable truth. It is partly by pride and partly by their doubts that the ignorant are led to altercate about their cognitions and thereby they obscure the region of their inward understanding as the clouds overshadow the clear firmament. Of all sorts of proofs, it is the evidence of perception which forms their fountainhead as the sea is the mainspring of all its waters. It is this alone which is used in this place as you shall learn below. The substance of all sensations is said to be the supersensible apprehension or inward knowledge of things by the wise, and it is verily their right concept which is meant by their perception. Thus the notion, knowledge and certainty of things as, desire, as derived from words are styled the triplate perception as we have of the living soul. This soul is consciousness and egoism and is of the masculine termination and the cognition of the object whereby it is manifested to us is called a category that is samvid, samviditi and padartha. It becomes manifest in the form of the passing world by the multifarious acts and shifts of its volition and option as the water exhibits itself in the shape of its waves and bubbles. It was uncausal before and then developed itself as the cause of all in its acts of creating at the beginning of creation and became perceptible by itself. The causality was a product of the discrimination of the living soul. 
that was in a state of inexistence before until it became manifest as existent in the form of the material world. Reason says that the self-same being destroys the body which was produced of itself and manifests itself in its transcendental magnitude of intelligence. When the reasoning man comes to know the soul, he finds by his reason the presence of the indescribable being before him. The mind being free from desire, the organs of sense are relieved from their action. The soul becomes devoid of the results of its past actions as of those it has left undone. The mind being set at ease and freed from its desires, the organs of action are restrained from their acts as an engine when stopped in its motion. It is sensuousness which is reckoned as the cause that puts the machinery of the mind to work. Just as the rope tied to the log and fastened around the neck of a ram propels him to fight. The sight of external objects and the purposes of the internal mind set all men at play as the inward force of the air puts the winds in motion. All spiritual knowledge is holy, whatever it is found in any one. I repeat, all spiritual knowledge is holy wherever it is found in any one. It adds a luster to the body and mind like that of the expanded region of the sky. He sees the appearances of all visible objects and maintains his own position among them. He views the spirit in the same light in which it presents itself in any place. Wherever the universal soul appears itself in any light, it remains there and then in the same form in which it exhibits itself unto us. The universal soul being alike in all, the looker and the object seen are both the same beings. The looker and the looked being one, their appearance as otherwise is all unreal. Hence, the world is without a cause because it is an unreality and not created by anyone. All existence is evidently Brahma himself the perceptible cause of all. Hence, perception is the basis of evidence and inference and others as analogy and verbal testimony are but parts of it. Now, let the worshippers of fate who apply the term destiny to all their exertions cast off their false faith and let the brave ex exert their manliness to attain their highest state. Continue, O Rama, to consider the truth and lucid doctrines of the successive teachers of mankind until you can arrive to a clear conception of the infinitely supreme being in our minds. Chapter 20 On Good Conduct It is the society of the respectable and reasoning with them that leads most efficiently to the improvement of the understanding and next to the making of the great man with all the characteristics of greatness. Whatever man excels in any quality here, he becomes distinguished by it. Therefore, learn it from him and improve your understanding by the same. True greatness consists in quietness and other virtues without a knowledge of which it is impossible, O Rama, to be successful in anything. Learning produces quiet and other qualities and increases the virtues of good people, all which are praised by their good effects on the mind as the rain is hailed for its growing the new sprouts of plants. The qualities of quietitude and other virtues serve to increase the best knowledge of men as sacrifice with rice services to produce felicitous rains for the harvest. As learning produces the qualities of quiet and the like, so do these qualities give rise to learning. Thus, they serve to grow each other as the lake and lotuses contribute to their mutual benefit. Learning is produced by right conduct as good conduct results from learning. Thus, wisdom and morality are natural helps to one another. The intelligent man who is possessed of quietude, meekness, good conduct should practice wisdom and follow the ways of good people. Unless one should bring to practice his wisdom, and good contact, conduct in an equal degree, he will never be successful in either of them. Both of us, both of these should be conjoined together like the song united with percussion. 
as it is done by the husbandman and his wife in sowing the seeds and driving away the seed picking birds from their fields of grain it is by practice of wisdom and right conduct as causes of one another that people that good people are enabled to acquire both of them in an equal degree i have already expounded to you o rama the rule of good conduct and will now explain to you fully the way of gaining learning learning conduces to re- renown long life and to the acquisition of the object of your exertion therefore should the intelligent learn the good sciences from those who have studied and mastered them by hearing these lectures with a clear understanding you will surely attain the state of perfection as dirty water is purified by infusion of the kata fruits the sage who has known the noble has his mind drawn insensibly insensibly to the blissful state and that highest state of unbounded felicity being once known and felt in the mind it is hard to lose its impression at any time chap book 2 mumukshukhanda is completed sri ram jai ram jai jai ram